companies will hire a, a nice person with a mediocre portfolio over an asshole with a great portfolio. And you know what? If they are hiring assholes with good portfolios, you don't want to work there. So <laughs> there you go. There you go. You're listening to the CG Spectrum Podcast. CG Spectrum College of Digital Art and Animation offers specialized career training for the film and game sector. Join our hosts, Career Development Manager Maxine Schnepp and CGS Mentor Justin Mullman as they chat with industry experts doing cutting-edge work in film and games. Now, on to the show. Justin. I'm so excited because this week I got to talk to a really good friend of mine, David Cunningham. He is a lead hard surface modeler at DNEG. I used to work with him back at Mr. X. That's how we met. He also talks about mentoring and how to kind of move up in your career and how mentorship really helped him kind of figure out his life. And now he's doing that with other people. Awesome. Yeah, no, I love the DNEG mix and I'm really curious to hear what he has to say as being a hard surface modeler. It's a fascinating role. Yeah, I mean, we just had a really good chat it was a lot of fun so i think you'll like it a lot yeah so i'm a, i'm a lead hard surface modeler at the moment and that's... are you sure about that <laughs> <laughs> i said at the moment like at, like it could be taken off me you know? <laughs> like yeah. the, the confidence i said that was a bit scary yeah because no, it's it's a new it's a yeah. new role for me and um and it's a bit mm-hmm. you know i'm still finding my feet and it's a bit uh it's a bit scary um, and it's VFX, yeah, everybody, yeah. especially everybody above me, the VFX producer and CD Supes and everyone, they're it's all so knowledgeable and it's kind of intimidating when you're sat in meetings and, you know, I'm, I'm just a modeler and they're talking about on set cameras, getting angles and all this. I don't know. To me, that sounds tactical because <laughs> I just push polys around. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm know like, I I'm, I feel that way too sometimes like when people talk about on set stuff like even when I was back in school like I went to like a school I specialized in VFX all of the other people in my program that were interested in film like everyone wanted to be on set and even like over 10 years ago now that was like the last thing I wanted to do I was like ooh wait there's studios I could go 9 a.m to to you know 6 p.m. I mean, 6 p.m. Yeah. But, you know. <laughs> That's a short day. <laughs> 6 p.m. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I was like, oh, 9 a.m. That sounds great, you know. Um, and all of my friends and my old coworkers watching this are going to be like, mm, Maxie, 9 a.m. You were a 9.30 gal walking with, the, with your coffee. I'm like that meme you see of, like, the chick and her coffee of, like, strolling in at, like, 9.30 or 10. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry there was traffic in the, in the Starbucks. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> every day yeah. um no but uh yeah i remember even back in school being like oh this onset stuff with this call time this 5 a.m 6 a.m call time what's that all about it, no i i never liked that so i'm happy that you share my yeah my feelings people start talking about on set and like my eyes glaze over like yeah it sounds I, super stressful it sounds super someone, interesting someone else is doing that but super stressful mm. yeah so let's let's start at the uh, in the beginning in the beginning <laughs> Let's start at the beginning. In the beginning, mm-hmm. um, young David, tell me how you got into 3D modeling. I really, like, I've been playing, let's go back, let's go way back. So I've been playing, like, video <laughs> games for, like, you know, since the, since it was, like, you know, the stigma was, like, so, like, oh, you're such a nerd, like, you play video games. Like, that was me. I was, I was, yeah. I was that nerd. And uh, so, like, that always really interested me. So I did a, I did a course in video game design at, at college and that was just like that was a brand new course and it was one of these ones that was like media studies but just like rebranded into games and it was like, it like sucked mm. um but like that <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it was super easy and i i breezed through it um but it was interesting that got me into like unity and uh oh. yeah and and like i touched modeling on that and then from there i didn't game design at university in leeds in the uk and that uh was also interesting but i was like looking at the like the game design on a whole i wanted to do like level design and all that sort of stuff and like this course is very very like 3d orientated and uh so i've done a lot of 3d and i i'm glad because i really loved it and if i wanted to do program it would pro programming it would have been a horrible course to take because there was none of that but uh yeah, I remember when I graduated and I remember talking to my lecturer 
at the time. And I remember saying to him, like, oh, I don't know what to do. I might do this, I might do that. And I remember him saying, if you don't become a modeler, I'm going to f***ing kill you. So I was like, all right. <laughs> Guess okay. guess I'm yeah. guess I'm being a modeler. The rest is history. <laughs> and the rest the rest is history as they say. No, but it's been pretty rocky. Like uh it's not been straightforward. Um I know a lot of people go now go from you know, go from school into into VFX. But uh that wasn't the case in my day. Yeah. Say, Me so neither. Old, like, but like yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> I really wanted to get into game design and at the time when I graduated in 2013, it was like super hard, super, super competitive. And there was so many talented artists that went to like much better universities who've been doing 3D for ages. And like game design back then, I don't know if it's different now, but especially the entry level, super underpaid. Um, and all 3D work at that level, at like for me anyway, was super underpaid. But uh, it was super underpaid and super competitive. Um, so I just couldn't find a job. So I didn't realize actually that there's other 3D jobs that existed outside of games and movies. And like, especially movies was something that was like, VFX was something that was just so far in the distance. I was like, oh man, like I need 10 years in advertising. I need five years in this. Like I'll never get, that'll, that's way down the line. Like that is just so in the back of my head. Which is so crazy yeah. to think of now because, you know, people are coming out of school straight into, straight into VFX studios. But uh, yeah, I managed to get a job as a 3D visualizer. And I didn't know what that was, but it had 3D in the names and I needed a job. <laughs> <laughs> so I took it. I love that. You're like, I have no idea what I'm doing, but. <laughs> yeah, I was like, whatever. And I remember the interview and like my uh, recruiter was being like, yeah, the, the, um, they like do stuff for like uh, big arms companies like so you'll be like doing tanks and like all this i'm like yeah it's just like sick like i'm gonna be doing tank i'm gonna be making tanks all day and uh and i remember getting there and it was just trains and that was it just trains for three years <laughs> and that's where it all began <laughs> and that's where the odyssey began yeah and i learned a lot about things i didn't want to learn about like what? um like trains <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> fair yeah fair. but like but like it kind of opened my eyes a bit because we mainly done two things one was like uh one of these things was to recreate entire trains we would go down to the the station and photograph the hell out of a train and then come back and then just model it because we wouldn't supply cad in uh, they wouldn't supply cad in case we you know, plan to use that for malicious intent or something. I don't know, but they just wouldn't give us the can. So we had to photograph a train and then model it. So everything was modeled, like every nut that's, and bolt, everything. That's kind of cool, though, that you had to go through that process. Yeah. You know, like, like it sucked that you had to do extra work. But now, in hindsight, that kind of stuff helps you use reference as a modeler now. 100%. Like in film and 100%. And then, you know, like you learn about stuff that like, you know, like, camera distortion and all that sort of stuff and and things you don't really like think about but then it gives you a lot of experience in that the f the first day of that job was a bit of a shock because you know i come in and i got told by the recruiter like you'll be making tanks and all this sort of stuff and i come in and i sit down my first day and my boss goes we got a special task for you david and i'm like oh boy it's a tank. Yeah. I'm going to make a tank. Yeah, it's a tank. <laughs> and like now I'm just like, you know, whatever, straight out of school. So like bright eyed. And it's like, okay, we got this task for you. Um, we need you to assemble something. I'm like, ah, assemble a tank. Got this. And he was like, <laughs> we, and he was like, we bought some Costco chairs and they need assembling. And I'm like, Okay, and there's these brand new leather Costco chairs, and they're like, yeah, we got these old crappy tatty chairs. Can you, like, assemble some new chairs? So I was like, yeah, okay, like, I suppose I can build some You're chairs. You're like, digitally? Digitally? Assemble? Yeah, like, and, like, this isn't going any, uh, like, philosophical direction. Like, I'm not going to be like, whoa, this opened my eyes. and this No, this is bullshit. Like, they made me yeah. build someone's chair. And so I built all these chairs, and I remember these gorgeous leather chairs, and I remember giving them out to people, I build one, give them out to someone. 
and then I built the last one. I remember looking at it, and then I give it to you know the the director or whatever, and I'm like, yo, oh, I think we're a, we're a chair short. You know, I haven't got, I haven't got a chair. I don't think you bought enough chairs. And he just goes, you'll learn yours in time. And I was just like, oh man, this is an omen for how the rest of this job is gonna go. So. Yeah yeah great um, first day yeah that was a great first day one job after that i pretty much had it i nailed the interview nailed the art test they were like yep fly to come fly to amsterdam meet the team meet everyone so i you know woke up at 5 a.m drove to the airport flew to amsterdam took the train in the wrong direction to Rotterdam I had to call them and be like can I delay the interview because I'm in Rotterdam and then, and then I had to get back to Amsterdam take the right bus and I was like in this nice blazer and just super sweaty because I've just been on a flight and been driving and, and then I got there and then I met the team and I'm like I'm so excited and then uh, yeah I, uh, I remember getting home and they'd be like oh we've changed the specs of the job <laughs> So you're no longer needed. After going all the way there to I have other similar stories to that. And now like whenever I get a I get like a new job or whatever, I'm like, that job's not nine until my butt is in that seat. Because I'm like, anything can happen. Until you've signed that contract, like and yeah. I, and I mean I don't think this it's is not real advice. I don't know, but this is just how I view how I view my my career. I'm just like until something is signed, it's that's not yours because anything can happen. The industry is mm-hmm, so fluid. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, like like a verbal, oh yeah, we love you. Like that's not a job, you know. Even sometimes people, I've I've seen people like actually get contracts even, and yeah. then it it they pull it back or they send it back. They're like, okay, I signed it, and, and then um the the company like ghosts them. <laughs> Yeah, like, I got ghosted. Sent the contract. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've I've Failed. been asked like, oh, what's your salary range? I'm like, oh, what about this? Because it was in like Eastern Europe, and I didn't have a clue of like what the rates were. And like, I was like, what yeah. about this? And they're like, oh, you're way too expensive. And I'm like, yo, I don't know. Like, I don't know cost of living or whatever. Like, you tell me. And then yeah. uh, they just ghosted me. <laughs> and I remember emailing them, be like, so do I still have a job? And uh, they just didn't <laughs> reply. So I, yeah. I, yeah, that was that. That sucked. But uh, <laughs> but you know, like doors closing and opening and all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, it's yeah. something to get used to. I mean, I I kind of warn students that yeah, like just assume you will be rejected, and that's that's it's not just what I tell people, but that's kind of how I always saw things myself too. Is like I don't like I assume every single job I apply for, I'm not gonna get. Like I, I apply and then I try to immediately like forget about it and just continue yeah. going on about my day. Like even at Miss Drex, I think like I, I applied for some job, but it wasn't, I wasn't like looking, like I wasn't in need of a job. Like I, I was currently working already and it was like, oh, this seems like an interesting position. It was like the, the resource manager position. I was like, mm, you know, this might be interesting because I'm interested in, I wanted to learn more about like how a studio runs like not just from a producer's perspective but like how how do they actually manage people like what's the back end like like how does all that work and I would always have like problems with not having enough people and so this job interested me because I was like okay I want to find out what it's like to actually be part of that process of hiring people and managing them and figuring out how many people we need for different projects um I mean, mean, it's just as hard when you're in that seat, but whatever. But yeah, I applied for that job in February, I think. And I, you know, I forgot about it. I was working. So I was like, I'm busy, whatever. And then um, I heard back in, I want to say June, June or July that year, like months later, like I had didn't even remember what I had even applied for yeah. at that point. Yeah, like send it and forget and just keep yourself busy. And like, especially when I was yeah. unemployed, I was just like, apply for one job a day, anywhere, even if it's mm. in the middle of nowhere, just apply. And then it's done and then forget about it. And then you've done your, yeah. you know, daily thing. Because yeah, you could always deny, like if they get back to you and it's like not that cool of a position, you could always say no, thank you, you know? Yeah, and I think like people- not go. Yeah, I think people and like myself included get into this headspace of like, I've applied for this job. Oh my god, like what what if I have to move and what if I do this and what if I do this? And it's just like, yo, it's not 
yours to turn down until you've got an offer. Like, so just, yeah. like, just calm down. <laughs> Seeing a lot of it from the other side as well and people mm. applying for jobs and, like, you don't know what's going on in the company. You don't know what's going on with HR. You don't know if recruiting are understaffed. You don't know, like, there's so many different factors that go into it. And, like, you know, if you apply for a job and your friend gets a reply and you didn't get a reply and you're like, what did I do? Sometimes it's just life, man. It's Sometimes it's just yeah. happening. So your email falls to the bottom. And it's just, it's all about timing. And sometimes, yeah. you know, you're just yeah. unlucky. But yeah yeah out. obviously you have to have like some skill but but yeah sometimes it's it's like timing too i think from a student's perspective because i people ask me about this a lot they're like they applied to something or sometimes they even had an interview and then they're like when should i follow up with them and like half the time i'm like just don't i'm like <laughs> yeah. or wait at least if you like if you really want to follow up because people have different opinions about stuff like this. Like, there's no right or wrong answer. Some studios appreciate a follow-up because they're like, wow, what a keener. And then other places are like, leave me alone. <laughs> um, but but I was like, if you yeah, really yeah. want to follow up, <laughs> like, wait at least three weeks. Like, any earlier, yeah. like, is just too soon because, like, one or two weeks for a student or someone who isn't working feels like eternity. Yeah. Like you're sitting there, you're waiting, you're like, oh my God. But then you have, you know, actually working in a studio and it's like what you said, like when you're on the inside and you're actually part of the hiring process. And especially when I was a resource manager, I saw this a lot. It was like, I would have the department heads like come into my office, talk to me about like, okay, like these are the candidates I'm considering or, um, you know, and sometimes it'd be like a couple for, for one job that they're considering. And they're like, oh, well, you know, and they'd have different reasons why they would be thinking about different people. And it wasn't just about their portfolio. It's sometimes it's like, well, we have this project coming in and we have that one. So they specialize in this, which yeah. would be nice for this, but not for that project. Or or sometimes it was like personal scenarios. Like I had one department head and, and I love him for this because he was the only one who was actually thinking of, about this is he would also weigh things like gender parity on his team and be like, well, you know, this person is, is great, you know, and so is she, but you know, if we hire her, then we're, we're back on, on par with gender parity on my team. And it's something I'd like to maintain. Um, and, and it was just so refreshing to hear someone think about yeah. that. And it, it was other fact. It wasn't like just because it was a woman. That's why we want her on the team. No, no like, but these like, were if you good got candidates it. at the top. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And if you've like, especially like if you've got uh, a team full of full of guys, and if you mm. get a woman in, then you've got a different perspective on things as well. And like, yeah. and that goes for like, you know, any, any sort of diversity thing. So yeah, yeah, it's and like, and especially like, you're working in engineering, it's all dudes, all guys. And then when I started working in VFX, I was like, whoa, like, there's not there's people that aren't white guys here <laughs> like, this is so different <laughs> but it was really refreshing hey everyone quick shout out to cg spectrum for helping make this podcast happen cg spectrum is an online animation vfx digital painting and game development school that prepares you for a career in film and games whether you're just starting out or you're upgrading your skills get personalized career training and mentorship from industry pros who have worked on blockbuster films and best-selling games courses are 100 percent online and you you can choose from one-on-one -on -one private mentorship options or group classes with just four students max. You'll also get access to career support services and join an awesome community full of like-minded creatives just like you. Learn more at cgspectrum.com. We're bringing the industry to you. But yeah, it was it was funny you say that that whole like moving thing. I was thinking of a student actually that I talked to this week and she's still studying so she hasn't even started applying for jobs yet but she was already like well what if i have to leave and she was like in the netherlands she's like I'm like okay so you can consider any job within the eu if you want mm -hmm. if you're willing to move because you know you have that citizenship so i'm like that's great there's a lot of opportunities and blah blah and she's like yeah you know but she's also weighing like happiness and she likes living where she is now and then she was worried she's like but what if like i i have to get a job in france and then i have to think about moving and or, or another country and, then, and i'm like hey let's <laughs> let's hold on <laughs> until you get that offer in france or or wherever 
Like, you don't have to think about this. Yeah. Don't, don't stress about this what if until you get that offer, you know, and even then you can still say no if you, you can weigh your options, you know, but but it is scary yeah. sometimes as a, as a student because you just don't know and you're like, should I move? Like, should I even not even apply to those jobs? Because what if I don't want to move and live in that country? And it's like, I just tell people to apply as much as possible. It kind of like you did. You're like, every day I'm going to apply somewhere, yeah. even if it's kind of like a uh, kind of job. But just see what happens, you know, and yeah. see which places are even interested in you. Because what if you're avoiding jobs um, for for one reason, but what if they're like, oh, yeah, actually, it's cool that you stay there. Or or what if they're not interested in you anyway? And you're like yeah. stressing about this and like they don't even want you. Like, <laughs> Yeah. And I think like when you're a student, I don't think you realize it when you're in it. But like looking back, why not move? Like, like, would you? If you've got these two decisions, like, would you rather stay where you are and regret not moving, or would mm-hmm. you rather move and try it out and regret staying? Because, like, yeah. I know which I I would much rather take the opportunity and then just come back home than never know home. what my life. Yeah, than never know what yeah. my life could have been like. Yeah. 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 Totally. I mean, like. The, a lot of the students I work with are older, so they're not just like straight out of uni, like, you know, no, 20 yeah, years yeah. old or, or whatever. So she, she did have like a, a more nuanced scenario. Sure. Mm-hmm. But still, it's like, let's let's wait until you get the offer. <laughs> I'm like, you're you're yeah. stressing yourself out over like a hypothetical and you haven't even applied anywhere yet. Like, I haven't even looked at your resume yet. Like, <laughs> let's finish yeah. the portfolio first. Then we can check out the resume, then we can start job hunting, you know, and then if you have an interview that goes well, and then they give you an offer, that's when you can start to talk to your partner, figure stuff, okay, is this worth it? You weigh, you know, the salary versus the moving aspect and this and not seeing your friends and, you know, but there's also benefits to moving. Like, you know, you go to another country and yes, it sucks to to miss your friends, but hey, now your friends have like a place to visit. And yeah, you know and you make new and friends like, and yeah, yeah coming to montreal for me was like such a big thing and like it gives you a chance like to to move it gives you a chance to sort of like reinvent yourself and like yeah. and like kind of like be who you want to be and like especially like in the uk there's all of the and i don't know if this is like anywhere else but like for me there's all this social pressure to settle down and get married buy a house why are you renting mm-hmm. like renting stupid you're just throwing money away you're just paying for someone else's mortgage and i'm like oh my god like i don't like i don't want to commit to a mortgage like i don't know where i want to be but like everyone all my friends are telling me that this is something i have to do because that's what they're mm-hmm. doing and you know and I, it's just it is stressful and then i moved away and i moved here and everyone's just like house mortgage what mortgage you know, and they'll be in their 40s, 50s. They don't care. They're happy. They're just yeah. going city to city working. It's just like, whatever, like, who cares? And it's just like yeah. so chill and laid back. And I'm just like, okay, like, I'm so glad that there's, there's there's people with like a similar mindset and it's, you know, refreshing. What made you decide to move here? Okay. To Canada. So, to ca- <laughs> <laughs> so like, Canada's always been in like the back of my mind, you know, but it's always been so far away. People keep saying that, and I'm like, really? Why? Yeah, it's, it's, I get it is a nice country. I mean, I'm very happy here, but it's but I, I've heard a lot of people say that they're like, my dream has been to move to Canada. I'm like, <laughs> but when I when I left when I left Five Lands, my, my first job, and I was just looking for I was just looking for anything, and uh, I applied for a job this this technical communicator job. Um, I failed the art test like abysmally for that job. <laughs> and my bot my old boss still gives me shit for it to this day like <laughs> still gives me crap for failing it how did you feel like what did you what did you do wrong i was so angry i was so angry <laughs> so it was in the automotive industry for the art test we had to like render a brake disc and i remember going down and i remember being like okay is this in in v-ray and they're like, yes, V-Ray is installed on the machine. It's all in V-Ray. And I'm like, I am going to nail this art test because all I do is sit in 3DS Max and render stuff on V-Ray. This is easy. So I I remember sitting down at the desk and like you're sat at the desk and you're sat like surrounded by everyone. So there's people on your left and there's people on the right working. 
and I'm sat on this computer and like so it was like an in-person art test oh yeah yeah, yeah. Oh. back back in the day it was all in person <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Now they're like, you send it, they're like, you got two weeks, you know? <laughs> so I come into the office, model this thing, I'd like, do this thing. And there wasn't that much modeling in this job. It was just like a lot of rendering and camera animating and stuff like that. And I went to click on V-Ray and it was like, bling, V-Ray isn't installed on this. So I remember like going over to the, my interviewer, my, my old boss, and being like, hey, like, is this supposed to be in, in V-Ray? And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay, because it's not installed. And he was like, oh. <laughs> Just use Mental Ray instead. And I'm like, I haven't used, me I've completely forgotten how to use that. So I like, was like sat in Mental Ray. Like, I'm like, like, I think this is how you do a light. And then I think this is how you apply an HDRI. And I think this is how, and like time was like running out. So like, I just got a render out and it just looked crap. And I was so pissed because I was like, man, if this is in V-Ray, like, I would have got the like the refraction index perfect and all this on the breakdown. I'm like, oh man, like I didn't know how to do any of that in mental ray. And yeah, so I left and I was like, yeah, I I remember being like, yo, I uh, I I couldn't get anything else. I couldn't get anything out. And he was like, yep, yeah, no worries. Like, let's go upstairs and talk. Anyway, I ended up getting that job because I just uh, my charisma probably carried me through the interview. But. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, and uh, and but I only planned on staying in that job for for like six months. I was like, I'm just gonna get it, and I'm gonna keep applying for jobs and then leave. But uh, yeah, it wasn't I, like a dream job. It was just like it wasn't. A, it wasn't a dream job. Better than the last know, one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I was like, this will just give me a little stepping stone to get to the next the mm -hmm. next step. And I was there mm -hmm. for three years because I just loved it so much. The people were amazing. My Boss Lee Thornet, shout out to him, is fantastic. He like I think it really makes a difference when you work in a company where people recognize your skills and reward you for it. You don't feel like you have to prove yourself and like, you know, I'd go the extra I'd go the extra mile for myself, you know, like to because I wanted to get this work done and I want to get this done. And he would put me on things like um like uh, this leadership program. So he put me on a le leadership program with a few other people. And this was like an internal program? Like yes, yeah, so this is an internal leadership. program. That's so nice when companies do that, huh? Like, yeah. not every place does that. <laughs> yeah, and it was like, Full we stop. want to train you how to be a leader. And like, you know, <sighs> you don't get that in VFX. <laughs> R.I.P. <laughs> and like, they teach you all these skills. And then they were like, oh, we're going to teach you how to do like coaching. So I was like, what's that? And it's like a lot of self-reflection and like looking at things objectively. And like, we had to do a lot of exercise. So it was like a, it's like a one or two week intense course of like eight hours a day of being in this room and doing all these coaching exercises and doing things like uh, Nirvana letters where you have to like write a letter to like a best friend, but in the perspective of where you are in 10 years time. So I would be like, mm. Maxine, right now I am working for my own company and I am living in Canada. And it's and it's like right and it's just like stuff like that. And it really, really mm. makes you like it just makes you reflect a bit on like how you approach things and what your yeah. goals are in life. So it yeah. teaches you. I mean, if you stuff. can imagine it, you can like you can visualize yourself there. And and that's like half the battle is like if you can imagine yourself somewhere or you have this goal then you can slowly start to plan like the steps of how to actually do it. You're like, 100%. okay, you know, maybe, maybe it won't happen. Maybe five years in you, the goal shifts or something like that. But, but yeah. just to have that, if you're just going blindly day to day, like yeah. it's hard to make any progress because you don't yeah. know what you're working towards aside from like yeah. more money. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, 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 exactly. You know, or and like then... going from junior to mid to senior. And it's like, that's fine too. But what's next you know what i mean yeah and at like the end of this leadership program and this is like gonna sound like such a like a cheesy story but it 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 happened and it and, and it was just it so happened. weird it happened <laughs> on like the i end love of cheesy the stories i love <laughs> the cheesy end of the stories. course my my two people doing the leadership uh, training david and, and paul they got me into a room and just have a one-on-one. -on -one. And they had this piece of paper. It was split into, uh, it was split into quarters. So it was in four sections. And they said, okay, David, like, where do you see yourself on this piece of paper? And on the bottom, 
it said, I don't want to be a leader. I have no, like, ambition in being a leader. I just want to get on with my life. I'm fine coasting, whatever. And the next one was like, maybe I do want to be a leader. I want to, you know, but I'm, I'm not ready. I don't want to do this. And like, maybe in, you know, 10 years time or whatever, like, I'll get this someday. And then the next one was like, I want to be a leader, but I'm lacking something. And then the final one was like, I am a leader. This is like who I am. So they were like, where do you see yourself? And I was like, okay, I think I'm in the third box. I am at this. I want to be a leader, but I'm lacking something. So they mm. say, what, what, what do you think you're lacking? Because coaching is all about like asking these open questions and making you talk about it. Because when you talk about it, you, you open stuff, open up stuff in your mind. So I'm like, well, I think my technical skills, I don't think my technical skills are there. And I think when you have to be a leader, you have to know everything so you can tell people what to do and like you can lead by example and all this. So they say, well, 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 we think you're in a different box. And I'm like, okay. No, like we think you're here. And they point at the fourth box, which is I am a leader. And they were like, <laughs> and I was like, well, that's sweet. But I was like, but you're not me. You don't like know like what I'm technically skilled at. And they were like, well, we'll tell you what you're missing. And I'm like, Shit, what am I missing? Like, I bet it's technical skills. I bet I need to do more of this. So they're like, no, like this is what you're missing. And then they turn the, and I shit you not, they turn the paper around and it's just got believe on the back. <laughs> and they were like, all you're missing is self-belief. You need to believe in yourself. And you'll be there, dude, I broke down. I lost it. I was just like a mess. And like all these realizations of like everything I sort of wanted in my life sort of like just came to like the front of my brain. And I was just like, this is, yeah, I think I do know what I want. And I think I just need to to have the confidence to get it. Because a lot of the time it's about self-confidence and it's about feeling like you you can get there and then seeing a space for yourself, you know, actually. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And there then there is a seat from for that... me. There is a chair for me in the studio. Exactly. <laughs> and then from that And I point, didn't build it either. Someone and else it's not did. a train. <laughs> And then from that point, two months later, Maxine, I had uh, broken up with my girlfriend um, and I was in Canada. Wow. Just like after that. How did, how did you, were, were your employers supportive? Because they had, they're the ones who pushed you to do that leadership course. Yo, so which, many people quit after cost... that course. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but like, and but... that, but they still they they teach that in they teach that in coaching now, and they say like, mm. and especially Dina, like, they say it's okay if you coach someone out of the job because they weren't happy there, and they mm. don't want someone at the company that's not happy, so that's fine, mm -hmm. and like, and you're just making them realize it. Would you rather have you know someone else that wants to be there, or someone that's really not happy and then leave? So it was super weird. So I I. I Went on the internet and I looked. I, I, Sorry. Like, I, 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 I went on the know. internet. <laughs> I went on the internet. End of story. That's me. Beep, 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 no, so I, I went on the website that had all these VFX companies, right? And I must have done it reverse alphabetically because, like, Mr. X was like top. And I was just like, Mr. X, don't know who they are. Apply. <laughs> I applied and then like I got an interview and I was just like, what the hell? And I, there was no art test. Amazing. I interviewed with- <laughs> We were too busy for art tests. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm so, I'd never want to do an art test ever again. But also Paul, like who was your manager at the time, I think yeah. he had, or has, you know, he's still, he's still with us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, he's at a different company now, but, uh, but he has such a good eye. And a background, like, I, I don't think that he needed art tests every time, you know, to really yeah. know someone's abilities. Like, he was able to tell really quickly just from looking at a portfolio and, and seeing what he had to see. Um, yeah. He had a really tight team. Like, he, he was yeah. such a great manager. Yeah, yeah. He, and, like, that, like, X and SimCon, where I've had two amazing managers, I've just loved because you have such a great team and they make you feel like really, you know, involved and you have such good camaraderie. And then I had four months of living that 
hilarious VFX studio life before I started working from home and I am still working from home to this day (laughs) because of the pandemic. So that was pretty crazy. Yeah. So tell me about, you know, going from Mr. X, you know, now being at DNAG and like working your way up to senior positions and then lead. Plus now you're a coach. You're like, you've come full circle. Tell me about yeah. um, tell me about that and like how you're coaching people now. It's super weird because I was I was a, a senior at this engineering company, uh, Semcon in the UK, and then mm. I come into VFX and like I'm like they put me in as like mid junior ish because like a lot of the times if you don't have experience in VFX it means you've never done anything in your life ever and that is a lot of the time is how you are viewed it's like oh you're a, a, a child that has never worked a day in your life yeah when really I've got you know all of this experience and especially like working in a smaller company like I would do animations that were like I would storyboard it I would script it I would meet with the branding manager of of the automotive company I would do this and I would go back and forth and like and I would like have to animate a comp it do all this you know so like I've got a lot of experience especially as a generalist and then you sort of you get pigeonholed uh, which is fine because that was the job I signed up for I'm not saying it's it's a bad thing but you're just you know honing your skills a bit but uh but x like when i joined that was really really tough the first day i remember thinking i've made the worst mistake of my life this is horrible (laughs) the first day (laughs) being like can you can you model this hero thing in two weeks like can you work 50 hours this week can you do this do this do this and i'm sat there like bro i don't even know how to launch maya i didn't even know how to use maya Oh yeah, because you're in I, 3ds Max. Because I was right? doing from 3ds Max, yeah, uh, yeah. So like, yo, I was so stressed, and I nearly quit, and I was like nearly caved, but like, I sort of just powered through, and then uh, yeah, sort of fell in love with it. So yeah, then I moved into like a senior position at X, because a lot of the time, I uh, I was like training new people, showing them how to use the pipe. And all of that sort of stuff. And like, I know I've got good experience with people and all that sort of stuff. So like, naturally, I just adopted that role as like the go-to person to train up new people. Then I left a year ago and joined DNEG. And uh, yeah, I remember they sent out an email saying, does anybody want to be a career coach? And I was like, yo, 100%. This not to, again, sound cliche as hell, but this changed my life. Yeah. Like, I moved country and got out of a relationship that I wasn't happy in and all that. And I really sort of, like, started to be a bit more introspective of how I looked at things. And I'm like, if I can give someone the tools to do that as well. If I could be a homewrecker. You... Yeah. <laughs> and cause oh, people yes! to... Oh, my God. <laughs> If I could help I people to break up with way. their girlfriends <laughs> or boyfriends <laughs> and leave the country. I never looked at it in that way. <laughs> no, because I know you guys do 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 uh, do mentoring. Right? Yeah, yeah. And like this, so I'll, I'll just I'll just point out the the differences between the mentoring and coaching, just for people that don't know, mm-hmm. because a lot of pe- a lot of times people get them confused and think it's it's think it's the same thing, but it's actually completely different. Um, so a mentor would be someone with a lot of experience, um, giving advice to someone that doesn't have as much experience and they, they are in the same field. So that would be me, you know, showing a junior hard surface modeler, the ropes and the best techniques and all that sort of stuff. And I, I would give them advice based on my experience and, and my knowledge. And that's sort of a bit more of mentorship. Whereas coaching, you don't need to know anything about that person's sort of role. It's purely like giving someone the emotional tools to look at things sort of objectively and figure out a goal and how to get there. Mm. So the two most common things I use are something called the GROW model, which um, stands for goal, reality, options, and then your willingness. Okay. So you establish a goal. So what is your goal? You want to um, become a lead or something like that. Is this realistic? 
what's what's the reality of doing this? And you know, this could be for like anyone. I don't have to. This I could be coaching a VFX supervisor who's got you know forty years experience in all this. But you know, I'm just like I'm just like asking questions and asking mm. open questions and making them think about it. So and they'll say, you know, like uh, yeah, I think it is. I think it is a reality. I'm like okay, what are your options? How can you get there? It's like all right, well, I'm not you know, good enough for this. Okay, so how can you get better at this? And then it's just all that. And then are you are you willing to do that? Are you willing to put in the effort? And then they might be like, well, actually, I'm not. Okay, so how do we circle back around? And how do we address this then? It's kind of like talking into a mirror a bit, um, but except the mirror's just saying, but why? <laughs> and like, how does that, does that give you conflicting feelings and all that sort of stuff? So it's uh it's it's pretty powerful and uh and another another thing i use a lot is uh something called the the circle of influence and that's sort of objectively looking at what what your worries are and what your concerns are and seeing um if they are in your control or not you know so you might say that i'm worried about what this other person thinks of me it's like you have no control over this person's feelings what can you control? What can you do? Okay, well, I can do this and I can I can work harder and I can work this in my own time because this is in my control. And and like just putting stuff into like graphs and like even just writing stuff and putting them in circles, like it really like visualizing things really like uh, really helps to th see things a bit more clear and, what, and what, what's actually a priority in your life. Have you pulled the whole like believe thing? Have you done that? I haven't. <laughs> I'm not experienced enough to do that yet. <laughs> That's advanced level coaching. <laughs> that's that's high level stuff. <laughs> one I day. know I've made it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That that's your new goal yeah. to like one day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pull pull it out. Yeah. Um, so speaking of which, you know, a few years ago, you made this choice to move. You're like, I want to work in the, in the film industry. You made that happen. You wanted to be a 3D modeler. You wanted to be a leader. You're there. Okay, you did it. Pat on the back. How does yeah. it feel? Feels good. Um, I it mean, I nice. hope it feels good. Yeah, yeah. You're like, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so what's next? You know, the, the coach in me now is asking you, like, what's your new goal? Like, what, what, what's your five year plan now or a 10 year plan? Wow. Yeah. So, you, you've got me thinking. So, shall I let you in on a little secret? Yes. <laughs> I, um, I know, like, I think it's important to be self-aware when you, and this is, this is some good advice. So I think it's, if I don't say so myself, so I think it's pretty important to be a bit self-aware um, when you're, when you're looking at your own skills, because I know that I am not the best modeler and don't let anyone at my company hear that. <laughs> because I know, I know I'm you not You know this is modeling. public, right? This is going to be on YouTube and I'm not, Spotify and I'm all like, the there's streaming probably <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> and like, and there's probably students out there who can do what I do, like faster and better quality or whatever. But I know my strengths and I know that I'm shit hot with people. And I know that I'm so much of a, a better leader and manager than I am an artist. And I know that in my 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 past self I wanted to be to do something super creative or whatever. But now I feel like my goalposts have sort of changed. And I think it's perfectly fine to change your goalposts later in life. Because I think a lot of people, and I don't know if it's like a millennial thing, think they have to have this super successful thing and they have to do the whatever, the top of whatever. But um, I'm happy moving into more of a management role of something and having and developing a great team because mm -hmm. I think I just really want and like that's what makes me sort of strive and like really gets me going is that is to have a, to, a good team. And that's like all I really want. And like people... And especially in VFX, like people are saying like, oh, I want to work on this show and I want to work on this show. And they're like, God, David, what show do you want to work on? And I'm like, I couldn't give a shit. What show I work on as long as I have a good team. Yeah. I will work on My Little Pony if I have a kick-ass team that is good banter. 
Mm-hmm. Like, I do not care. So, yeah, so that's sort of where I'm taking my skills at the moment. Who knows? This might change in a year. It might change my mind, but, yeah, but it's kind of fine to change your mind. But it is. It is. And I think it's, like, yeah. so necessary to evolve yourself, like, based on, okay, this life experience, like, this happened to me in the last year, or th- this is what I've done in the past five years, and looking at it again, and, you know, I, I try yeah. to coach students as well to to revisit these goals at every major life milestone and that might be uh, a unit of time it might be like every year or five Mm -hmm. years it might be on your birthday it might be you know when something major happens in your life like you get a promotion or uh you know you you move in with your partner or or whatever you break up with your partner um you know whatever happens it's good to like take a step back (laughs) um and think about like okay what yeah. What am I doing now? You know, a s- similar thing happened to me. If if you asked me five or 10 years ago, Maxine, do you want to work for a school? I'd be like, Ugh, no. Maxine, do you want to do a podcast? <laughs> no. <laughs> I hated my voice my whole life. You know, like I was like, no one wants to listen to me. Actually helping people get into the industry or like figure out what they want to do with their life. Um, I love it, you know, more yeah. than any credit I've gotten on a movie or a TV show. Like when someone messages me and says like, Maxine, I got the job or Maxine, I got an interview. Like nothing, nothing beats that. The fact that I, this That's is great. a job and not just a hobby for me is like amazing. But, um, yeah. but yeah, it's like things change and like, yeah, there's, there's other things that I value more now than, than a credit um and people ask like oh do you think you'll get back into it and like probably um but am i gonna be aiming for like those triple a like or like blockbuster movies honestly probably not like it's like you i want to have a good team i I would rather work on on like a funny christmas movie for netflix (laughs) than than like do some super stressful marvel movie you know and it's like they're all great it's all good but um but i want to work on something where like i have more um of a say or like you know i i can actually like contribute more and not just be uh, a cog in the wheel um yeah so to say so but yeah it is important to yeah. like take a step back and think about like okay what do i feel like now um and it's totally fine to change your mind yeah and 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 especially like with me and this whole this whole train thing I realized we've missed a lot of train stories. We didn't out. talk about trains as much as wow. we should have. Yeah. Let's take it back. Because, because because I I nobody wants to be known for as like the train guy. This is the train mm. expert or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But like Except for Francis and like, uh bourge, bourgeoisie, whatever yeah. his last name is. That's not his last Our name. The national treasure. Yeah. yeah, the national UK treasure. <laughs> But like that's just something like that's sort of been like like memed out of me. Like that's been assigned to me, and it, you can either be a be a dick about it, or you can either embrace it. And like because I had all this train knowledge, I remember at Mister X, we were working on Anola Holmes, and we did the big train fight sequence on Anola Holmes. And uh, I wasn't on that show yet, but I was on a, a I was on another show. I think I was on on the Alienist, mm-hmm. and um, being around other people, and the, and they were doing this train scene, and the supervisor, I remember looking, and she was saying, uh, "Oh, and and you have to move the logs, move the move these logs, and get the stones." And I'm like, "Move, move the logs and get the stones? Like, what are you talking about?" And I looked over, and I was like, "Oh, the the sleepers and the ballast." It's the proper term, sleep. And she was like, "Oh, the how do you know?" And I'm like, "Well, oh, let me have a look." I'm like, what are you doing? The the ballast would never fall. That that would be terrible for drainage. Is that even a four and a half foot gauge? That'll te- you would never have fish plates that close together. Are you kidding me? What Did are you, you screw doing? that clockwise or <laughs> counterclockwise? Yeah, exactly. And they were like, how do you know so much about trains? And I'm just like, don't ask. And then like, so I went on all the homes. I did a bit of the a bit of the trains on that. The word got out. Yeah, and that's when uh, that's when Snowpiercer was next. Yes. And they were like, oh, David's a train guy. He can help on Snowpiercer. <laughs> and I was just like, fuck. 
That's so good. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to be known as the train guy, but you know, whatever. Like, I Snowpiercer is kind of cool. Like, I had to texture this entire train, and it was a massive, massive challenge. And it was like that show was really hard at the time because that was peak COVID in 2020. Mm. And all the companies were letting people go and all the companies were taking on work that they didn't have people for because they were letting everybody go. So that was super stressful. But so, yeah, so there was Snowpiercer. And then I was like, haha, it's funny. I've done two train things. And then my last show at Mr. X was The Harder They Fall and I had to model the train. And I was like, of course, of course I have to model the train. Of course that came in for me. And at this point, I'm just like, you know, I'll just smash it out. So I smashed that out. And then my supervisor left to come to DNEG. And then I left X after I finished that show and came to DNEG. And my supervisor on the heart of their fall also doing a train. And I was just like, ah, this is it. I just have to subscribe to this now. This is my stereotype. Yeah. But I am the train guy. And Yeah, you and, got typecast, yeah. just like actors and stuff do, right? Yeah, I work <laughs> I all there was another um show that's not out yet, unre- untitled train show that i worked on at x um i'm sure i can't talk about yeah so we'll 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 know we'll find out eventually yeah (laughs) which yeah yeah we'll 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 see it on your imdb page everyone google him oh yeah yeah. (laughs) so before we finish up i mean i could talk with you for hours honestly we have a lot of fun we we all know that i work for a school as well so i'm mentoring people and helping them with their careers so a lot of people watching this podcast are are people who are trying to get into the industry. Hopefully there's some other people watching too, but I know that we have a lot of um, <laughs> students and juniors like just trying to figure out like, how can I how can I get in, you know? So aside from finding those stepping stones and maybe some other industries like you did, do you have any other tips um, or, or, you know, words of advice for people who are trying to get into this industry? You know, what would you share with some of these People. I would say one of them is 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 fake it till you make it, but I know that's very controversial. So I'm going to rephrase that because <laughs> because I don't want my I don't want my supervisors to be like what? <laughs> yeah, and um, I still want to make sure my students are doing their portfolios. Like, <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Don't fake that. Yeah, I would change that to 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 uh, say yes more mm. because in in Semcon. Uh, my the second company worked at uh, this automotive company. We had a, a job for a, a dishwasher come in. Super super exciting stuff. Oh, a washing machine. Sorry, was the first Ooh. one. And super super exciting stuff. And I remember my boss Lee sat me and the other seniors down and said, "We got this thing coming in, and it's going to require water simulations." And it's going to require cloth physics and it's going to require all this and animating and rendering and all this sort of stuff. Do any of you guys know anything about that? Do any of you guys have experience or want to take that on? And like, we all kind of just like looked at each other and it's a big silent. And I was just like, yep, fuck it. Do that. Yep, let's do it. Yeah. I have no, I've never used water simulation ever. <laughs> But I was like, but I can go home and Google it. Yeah. Like everyone's got that skill available to them to Google how to do something, especially with the resources now. Mm. I'm a very much a type of person that I'm just like, this will be done. This will be done. I don't know how it will. And I don't know how hard or how long I'll have to work, but I know it will be done. And uh, that's what happened with that. And I absolutely knocked it out of the park and we got loads more jobs come in and uh, that was great. And we scored a big contract with a client. So that was really, really good. And like no decision is like really a bad decision because like I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for a job that I hated <laughs> and and all these other dumb things that happened along the way, you know, that, that this path that I went on to, to get here. And um, yeah, like I said, play to your strengths. I know I'm not the best modeler in the world, but I am great with people and I'm great with this and I can follow instructions and I can be coherent and I can communicate and be transparent um, when other people don't have them skills. So I know I'm good at that. So that I play to that strength. Yeah, lastly, it's just um, it's just be be a nice person because that will get you so far in life if you can just you know just be a nice person like just you have a rapport with someone and you will 
companies will hire a, a nice person with a mediocre portfolio over an asshole with a great portfolio. And you know what? If they are hiring assholes with good portfolios, you don't want to work there because that will be toxic. So yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I like that though. And I think like an important thing to mention, you're like, oh, I, I, I guarantee you that I'm not the best modeler. And, and like, I'm, sh I'm sure, I'm sure that's true. But first of all, I don't know if it is like quantifiable to even figure out who is the best. Like, I bet you if I rounded up every single modeler in the no, world, yeah. it's like so much of that ends up being subjective. And I bet you, even if we could figure out who the best person is, if you ask them who the best modeler is, or if they're the best model, they'd probably say no too. Yeah, we all have imposter syndrome. Yeah, yeah. or there's always someone else that they're <laughs> looking up suffer. to. Yeah, we all suck. Um, <laughs> yeah, but but it's like there's always somebody else that's going to be better than you, and there's going to be twice mm -hmm. as many people that are worse than you. You know, so stop yeah. worrying about the where you're at and, and just like exactly focus on you. Do what you can. I love yeah. that do like what can you control what do you have control over yeah. and work to fix those things um oh and one more yeah one more one more of advice. my friends give one, one of my friends one of my friends give me this advice it is there's no secret handbook there's no handbook someone has read that you can't read that gives them the skills they have put in hard work and they've put in the graft and they've sat after work and worked on their portfolio and that's all you need to do. There's no magic spell. There's no secret handbook. It's just hard work and studying. And Yeah. And, and there's no like right way either. Like there's so many ways to get to where you are now. Like you as a lead artist now, as someone who's coaching people, who's, you know, who's worked on these titles, there's probably other people who are at your level as senior artists or as leads. And they took some different path. You know what I mean? Some people, yeah. maybe they did start out of VFX studio first or or maybe they didn't or they started somewhere else. And it's like, none of that is like right or wrong. It's just a different road, you know? And it's not a, and it's not a failure if you don't get into a VFX company and you get into a train company because you know what? You're still gaining experience yeah. and these skills are all, all still relative. Yeah, yeah. No one can take those skills away from you. Um, oh, this is fantastic. Yeah. This is so inspiring. Like this I feel great. inspired. I'm like ready to, to go <laughs> take the day, you know? <laughs> like I'm not working anymore today. No, I'm joking. I got, I got work to do, but... Uh, <laughs> pleasure talking to you and there's so many good tips i like i don't even know where to start but we, we talked about a lot of stuff so it's cool to hear about your your experience and, and your history yeah thanks david oh thank you it was great it was great to be on and yeah. it's always nice to just have a chat with you isn't it thanks for listening to the cg spectrum podcast for more on this episode visit us at cgspectrum.com forward slash podcast Check out our show notes where you'll find links to our guests and more behind the scenes. And if you're enjoying the show, please like, rate, review, and subscribe wherever you're listening, or share this episode with someone who might like it. See you next time.